This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle, Bumper to Bumper, helping you and your car feel better. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, June 1st, and uh, finally, I think 100 degrees are here to stay. I'm Matt Allen, along with my good friend Dave Riccio, and we are Bumper to Bumper Radio every single Saturday at 11, right here on KTAR. And Dave, I'll tell you what, we haven't done a show together in, what, five weeks or so? Oh, I'm going to be picking on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a while, and it feels good to be back with you. Uh, you know, Bumper to Bumper Radio is a show for you, the listener. We're here helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. Whether it's a car purchase, finding a shop, a little do-it-yourself project at home, we're here for you. So if you've got questions, we've got answers, just get involved and give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, we are announcing the winner of our Bob Bondurant School of High Performance Driving Giveaway. We gave away, or we're going to give away, a teen driving experience. We had a ton of entries by email at bumper to bumper and uh, but you didn't win if you haven't entered so got to got to that's one way to stay involved with the show and uh, be a winner and how to be safe working on your car uh you know we had uh, had a little accident this past week and and uh, somebody lost their life so we're going to talk about the things that you can do to be safe and Dave wrote a blog about that and it's on the KTR website under the bumper to bumper tab and oil change intervals always a hot topic uh when like Jill said when are you supposed to do it uh it's a question on the show almost every week I'm in the business and I think I am totally confused I've heard 3000 I've heard that uh 5000 I've heard 7,500. I've even heard 15,000 from one of the oil makers saying, man, this is good stuff. 15,000 miles. We're always talking about how the rules have changed about auto repair. The way your grandpa told you to do it is not the way you fix your car anymore. And the oil change is a big one that people don't know. So we went from every 3,000 miles, got to change your oil, got to change your oil, got to change your oil. People did that religiously. And then we've had automotive manufacturers say, ah, oh, you don't really need to change oil that often. And some of that, you know, environmentally, oils have gotten better. We don't need to be pouring all that oil down the drain or whatnot. You may pour it down the drain, Dave. Well, I don't pour it down the drain. <laughs> I don't want the EPA coming after me. We recycle it. But uh, so oil, oil change intervals have gotten bigger, but they're not 10,000 miles, 12,000 miles, 15,000 miles, as some of the manufacturers make claims to, which I, I'm, not, I'm not crazy about. Well, they've changed for several reasons. One, because the oil has gotten better. The filters have gotten better. The cars have become more efficient. You know, we're dumping all this extra fuel that we're not burning down into the cylinders. Well, that ends up in the oil or in the crankcase ventilation system. So so the efficiencies of the engine have gotten better. The marketing departments sure have gotten better. Way better. And the other thing I noticed, there is a little light that says I've got 50% oil light left. That didn't used to be a thing. You know, you used to have to, that oil change sticker was all you had. Now you have that reminder. Is that the is that the Bible? Do you go by that? Well, and we'd like to hear from you, all those who are driving around and all of you that are listening that have cars. Look up at that sticker that should be on your window and see what it says your oil change should be done. And look at your odometer and see how many miles you have and if you're over. And, and you know, maybe we'd like to hear what you do or what questions you have. And uh, you can, you can. Get involved at 602-277-5827. But Dave, again, we talked about the marketing arm. I worked, I, my last job before I opened the shop, I was a technician at Camelback Porsche Audi. Did I, you have hair then? I did have hair then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. But I hadn't worked on many Audis because I always, you know, I worked other places and worked at Porsche Specialty Shop and, and, and whatnot. But I get this service and I go change, do the oil change. I call an oil change and oil and filter. And the, and the service manager's like, "What are you doing? You're just supposed to change the filter. Mm. What are you talking about?" That feels well, weird. Yeah, big time. Top change the filter and, and add some oil. Well, that's not how they do it now. But that was marketing from Audi. You don't need an oil change. You just need a filter. Now you take the same Volkswagen engine and the same Audi engine, and we work on a ton of these. 
one manufacturer, Audi, says change it every 10,000. The same exact engine is in, is in a Volkswagen and change it every 5,000. Is that because it's different oil? No. I think the filter's different on some of those. Some variation, but yeah, that's but a huge difference. It's marketing. Well, I think if I'm a consumer and I'm out there, I come to the counter at Virginia Auto Service. And I say, hey, Matt, I just bought this car. It's a 2012 Toyota Camry. What do I need to do for oil changes? What is your advice at the counter of Virginia Auto Service going to be? Well, I had a customer the other day who had a brand new car. It was the first oil change, and she came in. She's like, oh, I'm past due. I'm at 3,500 miles or 3,700 miles. I need to get that oil change. I said, no, don't. let's not do that. You don't need to do it as much in this car. This car wants a synthetic or a semi-synthetic oil. This one happened to be a GM product, so we'll go – Go away from the Camry for a second. As a GM, they require a, a special, I'll call it special, it's not so special anymore, a Dexos certified, it's GM's oil. And uh, I said, no, let's, let's, it's not due yet, but your light's not on either, but we're not going to wait till the light comes on. I want to do that oil change every 5,000 miles. 5,000, 10,000, 15, 20, 25, 30. Then you always have, for me, you have the sticker, but then you have that. Right. Even number. It's just something you remember. Just go with it. Every 5,000 miles, I'm going to go see you, and you're going to take care of my car and let me know what I need to do. Well, I printed up a couple different ones. Okay. But, Dave, I will say one thing, though, real quick. That light probably maybe, depending on how you drive the car, there's a map or a program that somebody has written based on number of cold starts, how long you, how much temperature gets in the car before you turn it off, length of trips and frequencies. That oil change reminder or that life cycle may go to 0% at 7,200 miles, 8,400, maybe 4,700. I don't know. But it's not actually measuring the quality of the oil. No. There's nothing, no little sensor in there taking a sample. Just a prediction. Exactly. Based off of what the engine has experienced, this is what we're predicting is the estimated percentage of oil life left. So I went ahead and just printed up four different vehicles. I did Cadillac Escalade 2011. I picked all 2011s. Honda Element 2011. That's because that's what I drive. Uh, and then I went with a Toyota Camry 2011. And really, there's obviously a normal service timetable, and there's a severe service timetable. And you really got to look down at the fine print. And what we really want you to do here after listening to this, go look in your manual. See what it says. And don't just read the numbers. You got to go down and look at the fine print to see what the difference is between severe and normal use. I pretty much say Arizona severe. You know, you and I, you say, well, we're only really hot half of the year. It's super dusty here, and I think that's tough on oil. Well, and I think we'll go off tangent a little bit. We're severe all the time for oils and fluids and filters. We talk about timing belts. I think some people are overdoing it when they tell you your yes. 105,000 timing belt is do it 60 because yeah, we're that's severe. Overkill. Big but, time. But, yeah, so we – again, that's why the relationship with your shop in, in knowing when to deviate. But, but like you said, Dave, get in the owner's manual, and you always want to do at least the minimum. And, not, and it just came to my mind – we didn't talk about this earlier, Dave – not just the owner's manual, but, you know, how many times have you had an extended warranty denied because, oh, lack of maintenance. You didn't do your maintenance. I don't care what the manual says. Our guidelines safe to to make this warranty stay in force. You have to have an oil change every 4,000 miles or whatever. They don't care what oil you use. When I, we started this show, I said 3,000 miles. We all got married to that. Well, on this Cadillac Escalade 2011, it's still calling for an oil change every 3,000 miles in the severe service timetable. That's the Cadillac the Toyota was every 5,000 miles. The Honda was every 5,000 miles. There's one other I pulled here that I can't find my notes on. But uh, 5,000 miles, somewhere between the three and 5,000 mile mark. But what I don't want to see is people going 10,000 miles. Well, no, but you know now you have your higher end cars. Uh, BMW, for example, that's another one that we see a lot of. BMW, Mercedes, they have a large oil capacity, 10 quarts in some cases, 12 quarts. I said, we use liters on those cars, but <laughs> I don't know. But the they have system. an extended drain interval. They use, a, like I said, they use a lot of oil. They have a very good fleece filter, and they're letting the car go fifteen thousand miles. But we're seeing a big difference between the cars that we tell the customer go to the dealer for your free one because they come with 
four years of maintenance. Let us do the in the middle oil change. We'll do it every 7,500. Mm. The cars that we're seeing coming out of warranty are having a whole different set of problems than the cars that we see that we've changed the oil because the oil is carrying acids and, and uh, you know, all other kind of contaminants that come that, from the combustion process. And they work on the hoses and they contaminate plastics. And then don't forget about E85. If you're using that in your car, that's a whole nother story. So-